So the Surface Go is out, it's been getting a lot of love online and you can watch our review if you haven't seen it by clicking above or below this video. But when we put out our review, we got loads and loads of comments and DMs, people asking us how it works and if it works well with certain programs. So we thought it would be a cool idea to do a little video showing you how it runs Chrome tabs, how it runs Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Premiere, and some other applications that you might be using as well. So the first test we're gonna do is in Google Chrome. I know a lot of you have switched off Windows 10S and you wanna know how well it can run Chrome and Chrome tabs and Chrome apps and things like that. So let's dive straight in and see how many apps we can run and see how this device handles it. So first of all, we'll test Google Chrome. Now I found actually Edge works much faster than Chrome, but I know most of you use Google Chrome. So let's see how this performs. It runs a little bit slower than my MacBook Pro, but let's open a few websites here. So we're gonna open up the BBC website, uh, which is one of the UK's main news websites. Let's open up editorskeys.com. The rendering is a little bit slower than MacBook Pro, but it's okay, um, you know, the speed's okay. Let's go back to the BBC. You see it's a little bit jaggedy, and, and Microsoft Edge is very smooth compared to Chrome, but once the pages load, it's actually okay. So this next one is for you video editors. We had a lot of comments asking, can this edit video? My personal opinion is that really this is a secondary travel device and shouldn't be used for video editing, but it can run the Adobe Creative Cloud suite. So let's try it out. So we've chucked a few 1080p clips into our timeline here. And you can see this problem that we were getting to begin with. We couldn't work out what this issue was. We were getting these green and red bars. The actual video is playing fine in the background, a little bit of skip frames and things like that. But it turned out that uh, actually the issue was with the graphics card. Um, so if you go down to project settings, uh, general, we found that the render settings were set to Mercury playback engine GPU acceleration. And uh, what you need to do is change it to Mercury Playback software only. That then means the, the video can now play. See, it's already rendered a bit of the timeline here. And it's playing back okay. Um, this bit is rendered, so it should play back okay. But you can see we're getting some skip frames already, even on the rendered footage. So I'm gonna have to say this is a fail. So this next one is for you photographers. We're gonna try using Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Lightroom to see how it handles some raw images, and just some basic editing effects. We're gonna open um, some raw images that we've taken on our Surface Go test that we did. Um, we've got those on our desktop here. We've got these raw images. And we're gonna open this one here of a little building in Manchester with a red car in front of it. And we'll see how well this performs. So we're just uh, opening this image. This, this was taken, I believe, on a Canon M50. So you can see here already we've got a few little issues, and this is to do with the scaling of Adobe Photoshop that I noticed. Um, because of the scaling of the device, it scales everything by 150%. It means that you don't actually, you're not actually able to fit in the toolbars and menus here, which is a real problem. So you would basically need to change the scaling down, back down to 100% within Windows to actually have this fit in. So it's a bit of a tricky issue. Now once you're within Photoshop itself, uh, the main application displays okay. You know, the icons are a little bit small, but they're all easily accessible. You'll definitely need a mouse uh, to access these. Um, and let's see, so we're just gonna see if we can create new layers, which we can. Let's just do something to the image. Let's duplicate this image. Uh, let's do some adjustments to it. Adjust the brightness and the contrast. See, it handles everything fairly well. So the next app we're gonna use is Adobe Lightroom. Uh, we've just brought in the raw image again of the car and the building. Uh, so let's go to develop mode. Oh. Okay, so we've got the image here. You can see some of the graphics are a little bit small and it does make it a little bit trickier to edit an image, but you know, you can do it and that's the main thing. So you can see here, we can do the exposure. Let's bring the contrast up a little bit. Let's uh, scroll down. Let's take down some of those highlights from the sky. Let's bring up some of the shadows to bring some of the bottom of the image uh, in. Well, maybe let's have a look. Take down some of the whites down some of the blacks, maybe to about there, clarity. So you can see it actually handles 
the development of the photo pretty well. Now, what I like is that even though this is a little bit small to use your finger on, and remember, this is a tablet device, so it would be nice to be able to do that, and they've actually added this feature on here. So if you press this little icon down here, which looks like a finger touching the screen, you can enter the touch workspace. Now this enables you to do some of your adjustments that we were just doing, but with your finger. So we can do local adjustments, white balance, uh, exposure, so let's press exposure, and uh, you can just swipe these up and down. And while it's a, you know, it's a bit more basic than I think the full um, Adobe Lightroom you may be used to, if you're just working on the tablet section of the app, it's actually quite good. You know, it makes it easy to go through and adjust highlights and, and things like that. You can see it's, it's actually doing the effects fairly fast. Um, there's not much slowdown on this machine. So I'm gonna give Lightroom a thumbs up. So that's uh, some of the main applications done, but how does it multitask? We're gonna show you how it multitasks with say a video and Office Open or some other applications. So let's check that out. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna see how well it can multitask. So I'm actually gonna use Chrome, which we know is a little bit slower than Microsoft Edge, but I know a lot of you use this, so let's do that. Let's go to YouTube. We're gonna open Office up. And you can see how well you can basically multitask. Let's open this letter. Let's drag this to the side. There we go. Now I know these aren't the most you know, intensive uh, applications, but it just means that you can um, get some work done on the go. You can watch a video, so you can easily multitask on this device, and that's what I like. With the iPad, you are a little bit limited to a couple of apps and then just an overlaid app. With this, you can run multiple apps, and they actually run fairly well. This is the eight gigabyte version, so it can actually handle quite a bit of decent multitasking. So there we have it. So my personal opinion on this is still after a few weeks, I still really like it. Um, it's become my go-to travel device. I've uh, put the iPad in the drawer and haven't touched it since. You know, I will say, it's not the fastest machine, but in some areas it's quite surprising how well it can run the apps. And then in certain other areas like Adobe Premiere, you know, you wouldn't really go to this. And to be honest, it would be better to edit on an iPad because it can handle things like iMovie and LumaFusion really well with no rendering. This can barely run Adobe Premiere at all. Um, but I do love this machine. I think it's a really great productivity device. And uh, as I say, if you haven't seen our full review, make sure you check out that. We're gonna put the link above or below this video and you can see the full feature-rich review on our channel. Make sure you subscribe to our channel, hit that like and the notification bell, and you can be the first to know when we release new videos to this channel. See you in the next one.